Welcome aboard the virtual ship with Fellowship Chicago. While we can't have church traditionally, we can still be the church consistently. New method, same message. New platform, same power. New season, same God. Now, let's go into our worship experience. Hey, Fellowship, what's up, virtual ship family? Come on in, come on in, come on in. Come on, come on, come on, right in the chat. Let me know how your day is going today. How's your day going, Fellowship? How's your day going? I'm so glad you've tuned in again for another refuel. I don't know what to do. Hey, I want you to press share and let somebody know we're talking about taming your tongue. We're growing, we're shifting gears. And the main way to shift your life is to shift your lips. The main way to shift your outlook is to shift how you talk. And so listen. We've been working, y'all. We've been going through this book, and it has revolutionized our lives. I have received so many encouraging text messages, uh, personal messages, emails, that this lesson is changing lives. So press share, and let's pray. God, I thank you today for another opportunity to join with your people in a moment of growth, in a moment that's challenging and convicting, but God, it ultimately makes us better. It makes us more intentional. It makes us more mature, and it forces us to grow up. God, some of us are grown, but we've never grown up. So God, I pray that you would help us grow up so we can get off of that milk, and we can move over to meat and feast on the fullness of everything you have for us. But first, we gotta check ourselves before we can go any higher. Get the glory and all that said and done this is our prayer in jesus name and let everybody say amen amen and amen hey it's giving time on the ship look at those seven ways to give let's open up right there i want you to have an opportunity to give as i told you last week wherever you grow you sow wherever you grow you sow what does that mean if i go to another church and i tithe over at that church well should i give my tithes over there do i give my girl listen wherever you grow you sow if you want to tithe to your home church and you want to sow an offering to another church some of you in fellowship hey you jumping around enjoying this virtual life you at this virtual conference that church service this one ain't nothing wrong with sowing where you grow but make sure you take care of home first amen 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 so so where you grow and as we move a little further into tonight man this lesson is about to be very very convicting and uh, i don't have a lot of time because i have chosen to use the method that that deacon at my home church taught us young preachers he said son you ain't got to eat a whole hog to know you're eating pork and so i just came with a few little slices of bacon a little you know a little, little little piece of sausage tonight but i but i can't give you the whole hog but you will know you eating some good pork i don't eat pork in real life so maybe i need to find another example i don't know i don't know but uh, yeah but anyway y'all know what i'm talking about tonight we're talking about the cynical tongue and we're talking about the know-it-all tongue the cynical tongue and the know-it-all tongue I, listen y'all i need a whole day to talk about these but i have to do it in a condensed amount of time somebody say the cynical tongue C-Y-N-I-C-A-L, cynical. The word cynical means believing the worst of people and situations. When you believe the worst of people and situations, it's like you walk around with this unspoken suspicion at all times. You don't trust nobody. You don't believe people's motives were pure. You wonder, you're second guessing. They give you a gift and then you wonder, well, why they give me a gift? They say a compliment, you wonder, did they really mean it? You walk in a room and somebody laughing, are they laughing at me? cynical a lot of us are cynical you believe the worst of people in situations and then and and what makes it worse is you aren't just cynical in your mind now your tongue is cynical and every time you open your mouth you got something to say some sly you're wondering you listen another definition is you're distrustful of human sincerity or integrity i know a lot of brothers don't go to church right now because they're cynical Mm -hmm. Just keep looking straight ahead. A lot of husbands don't go to church. Well, that man, that man of God put on his pants the same way I do. Why y'all be giving him all that attention, putting him up on a pedestal? Well, first of all, nobody should be putting any preacher on a pedestal. But surely, my brother, you're not about to miss God because you're cynical of a man when your faith is not built on a man in the pulpit, but the man who died on the cross for your sins. Listen, there's a lot of people walking. I don't go to no church. I'm spiritual. I'm not religious. 
religious. Yeah, I understand that. That's cute. That's really nice. That's a nice cliche that's been around for the last 10, 10 years. But God is not want does not want you walking around mistrusting people because sometimes the very person who you think is going to hurt you is the person that's going to bless you. You block your blessings when you become cynical. The Bible tells us this. Watch this. Watch this. The Bible, Bible says in Proverbs 14, 6, cynics look high and low. A cynic is a person who is cynical. Cynics look high and low for wisdom and never find it. The open-minded, the open-minded person finds it right on their doorstep. When you're cynical, you can look high, you can look low for wisdom, for something right. You can never find it. For the cynical tongue, nothing's ever right. Have you ever met a person like that? I mean, you hate to go eat with them at, at the restaurant. Nothing is ever. They will ruin the whole dinner because they're going to find something wrong. Well, I see a piece of hair on my food. That's off your nasty wig. That ain't from the kitchen. Your little nasty wig is shedding. Your little shag dog on your head is shedding. And you, it's your own hair. You just messing. It ain't hot enough. It ain't cold enough. It's too cold in the car. It's too hot in the car. They're going to always find cynical people. It's never right. You can look. The Bible says, verse 14, 16 of Proverbs, they look high, they look low, and they look for wisdom. They never find it. But those who are open-minded find what they're looking for right on their doorstep. Isn't that good? Proverbs 1 and 22 says, simpletons, simpletons, simple-minded people, how long will you wallow in ignorance? Cynics, how long will you feed your cynicism? Idiots, how long will you refuse to learn? That's Proverbs 122 out the Message Bible. For you simpletons, for those of you who just, you, you just thrive on ignorance, how long are you going to stay ignorant? Cynical people, the Bible says, how long will you feed your cynicism? Idiots, how long will you refuse to learn? <laughs> Isn't that amazing that in this verse of scripture, cynics are placed with simple-minded people and idiots. Ooh, don't miss it, don't miss it, don't miss it, don't miss it. Because when you are cynical of everything, you're behaving as a person who is idiotic and simple-minded. I mean, stuff ain't always wrong. Here's some notable quotes. I got to keep moving. Cynical people are angry, disappointed, resentful, and mistrustful of those they feel should be acting in their best interests. Like a rotten apple in a barrel of good ones, a cynic can negatively impact everybody he or she touches. Y'all, I hope you listening to me. If you are a cynical person, and, and, and here's the thing, nobody's really going to tell you this, so you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. That's what we used to say in third grade. Check yourself. If you always are in the meeting and you have something bad to say and you never have anything good to say, check yourself. Cynical. All, or you, you don't trust nobody. Nothing's good enough for you. You don't like nothing. See, every week, me and the staff and some others who are leaders in our ministry, we have what we call strengths and opportunities meeting. We we call it we call it the uh, we what do we Lord what do we call it? We call it uh, the check in conversation. Check in conversation, and we review refuel. We review Sunday morning. We review everything that's going on, and we have two columns in the meeting. It's about a thirty to forty minute meeting on a good day. On a good day, it's thirty to forty minute meeting, and uh, and we go down the first side of the list: strengths, everything that was good, everything that we liked. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it, and then we move to the other side of the list: opportunities. Years ago, I learned from a guy, you don't call it weaknesses, you call it opportunities. Because whatever you call it, that's what it's going to be. If you call it a weakness, it's going to be a weakness. So we choose to call it an opportunity, a place where we can grow. And some of y sometimes y'all that list so long on that opportunity side that now around the church, when any program goes on, here's what people say, I don't want to be no opportunity. No, you better fix that because you don't want to be on the opportunity side. Well, well here, here's the science, here's the science. I could hold the meeting. And only deal with opportunities. But guess what that will create in our church? Guess what that will create amongst our staff? A staff full of cynics. A staff full of people who only look for what's wrong. 
But the fact that we begin the meeting with strengths, come on. It means I've got to look for what was right. And I got some people on my staff who we've had to check sometimes. And I said, now listen, why do you only speak when we get to the opportunity side? <laughs> and, no, and those people are watching tonight and you know I love you. You know I love you. It's all good in the hood like it should. But, but, but the truth is, you don't only want to be a person that got something to say when it's bad. Because you become no, here she go again, y'all. Here go, here go, mother never got nothing good to say. Here go, Reverend Doctor never got nothing nice to say. You don't want to be known as that, and you don't want to be cynical. One more quote, one more quote, one more quote. This blessed my life. Cynics must remind themselves that God is in control of every situation. You don't have to try to fix it all, address it all, cover it all, speak to it all. God is still a God. And whenever you think if you don't say nothing, nothing's going to be right, you're trying to play God. And the position of God is already filled. It, wouldn't it be a wonderful thing in your marriage if you were not cynical and you just let God be God and fix certain things? You don't have to say something about everything. Everything you see, you don't have to say it. I got to get off of this, but it's so, so good. It's so, so good. It's so, so good. Here's some suggestions that Deborah Pagay gives us. I, I, I got to read this, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time on the know-it-all tongue. Validate people's feelings by addressing their concerns with open and honest dialogue. Provide good rationale as to why a course of action cannot be taken or needs to be taken. Here's another one. Acknowledge, admit responsibility, and apologize for past mistakes and bad decisions. Decisions. Explain what actions will be taken in the future to avoid future problems. Oh, that's so good. People will connect with you better when you show vulnerability by apologizing rather than when you try to justify everything you did like you write all the time. Last one. Where possible, confront the cynic and ask what, what you can do to help restore his or her trust. <laughs> I really want to move on, but, but I, but I got to tell you all a story that happened. Um, you know, my first year pastor was last year, and, and y'all, I, I, I try to let you in on the experience. The people have been wonderful. Fellowship has been amazing. My leaders and staff are absolutely super fragile, whatever the word is, super fragile, catalytic, expert, Cadillac, and Honda. Y'all know the word. Everybody is wonderful. But I had, I had, I had a couple people on me last year who just, you know, just, 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 I, I guess they thought it was their job to let me know what the street committee was saying. And y'all know the street committee ain't never got nothing good to say. So, so I, I, at, at this point in my life, I don't want to know nothing the street committee got to say. But this person just went on and on. Yeah, yeah, they called me, they said this. They called me, they said this. I heard this. I heard this. I think this. I figured this. You might want to do this. Da, 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 da. I, I, I just stopped one day. I said, what are we doing right? <laughs> do you know they have never called me with any of that mess again <laughs> I just tell me one thing I'm doing right when you getting beat up in your relationship and they just keep on keep on keep on so just just stop so hold on hold on I hear everything you're saying I'm not denying it but can you just tell me something I'm doing right at that moment you will prick people's consciousness to realize I only speak when it's wrong and I need to open my mouth sometimes when it's right. Am I making sense on a Wednesday night? Help me just, 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 just come on, y'all. We got to do better than that. And then here's the next one. Here's the next one. Here's the next one with the little time I got left. The know-it-all tongue. I don't need a scripture for this. <laughs> I, I, don't need a, I don't need a page for this. I don't need a quote from Deborah Pagay. Everybody watching knows a know-it-all. And if you don't know a know-it-all, you is the know-it-all. If you don't know, I don't know nobody that know it all. I don't know nobody that know it all. It's you. And you know it. And, and you, oh, know it alls are just, they, oh, they, don't they just get under your skin? <laughs> we used to have people in my family, my grandma Sharp, when she was living, she, 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 she was, uh, she, she was what Zora Neale Hurston would call signifying. Signifying is when you got them sly jokes and you're coming for people and they don't even know you're coming for them. And, and she told me one day, why don't you call such and such and ask them a question? You know they know everything. <laughs> 
Everybody knows somebody that knows it all. Watch this. The scripture says in Proverbs 12, 23, a prudent man or woman conceals knowledge. Meaning, when you really know it, you ain't got to tell everybody. When you really are a wagon full of knowledge, a wagon full of wisdom, a wagon full of experience, your wheels don't crick as much. But the old folks say, an empty wagon keeps a lot of fuss. Here's the main idea. Even if you have knowledge and insight into a certain situation, sometimes it is wise or prudent to keep silent and give another the joy and fulfillment of explaining it to you. Oh, that takes some humility. You ever had somebody in your life and they and, and they start telling you the story and they say, did I already tell you this? And you know what we say? What I silly say? Yeah, you told me that already. You, 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 you just, just humble yourself because you might hear something this time in the story that you missed the last time. Are y'all with me here? You don't know it all. Young people, you don't know it all. I was 21 and thought I knew it all. Y'all, I look back now at my 21-year-old self and I say, you ain't know nothing. Oh, you can tell me I ain't know something in 21. You can tell me at 18 and 17, I ain't figured out, the, I didn't figure out the, the, the gravitational pull of the universe. You, you could tell me. I, 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 didn't, I didn't have this thing figured out. And I look back now and I say, you didn't know nothing. I was so busy as a 17, 18 year old preaching three times in one day, running up and down the road, just living and going and doing it and getting it and God and died. And my grandparents were looking at me like, when you going to rest? I don't need no rest. I'm good. I'm good. I don't need no rest. I'm good. <laughs> and my grandparents and my mom and daddy be looking at me. When are you going to, when you going to sit down, son? And I had old preachers telling me, boy, you, boy, you really, you really are rolling. And I'm sitting there thinking it was a compliment. They were like no why don't you go somewhere and sit down now at the age of 30 at the age of 30 y'all at the age of 30 I go sit myself down could you realize time got a way of catching up on you and I was just rolling thinking I knew it thinking I had it thinking I got and all of them were trying to tell me y'all one day it's going to catch up on you and you round here being fast. I love him. I love him. He's so nice to me. He's so nice to me. Like, he treat me the way I want to be treating everything. Like, I like him. Like, we really, he look out for me. He take me to Chick-fil-A and let me get number one. And, you know, like, ain't, ain't nobody ever cared about me. Even my dad ain't never cared for me like that. Like, he really loved me. He really cared. And then your mama looking at you like, you are absolutely an idiot. You are a whole fool. You are an absolute crazy girl. This boy got three gold teeth, dropping out of school, selling drugs, he doesn't respect his elders but I love him he's so sexy with me he just but he just do it for me mom he just everything I need mom he just got and your mama looking at him let's say you can do better than this and you won't listen because you know it all and you about to walk down the aisle and marry a man and really underneath that suit is a monkey I'm trying to tell you, be humble. The Bible says that God resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. You got to listen to people. And let me tell this, uh, uh, listen, some of you grown folk, we, and it's not just that young people need to listen to the older folks. Sometimes young folk can help the older people. You don't know, I don't, I'm 70. Child, I've been around the three times around you. I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been. I've had deacons tell me, and it, it's so beautiful to hear it. I've had deacons who are old enough to be my granddaddy who said, I'm so glad I can learn something from a young man in his 30s. You know how touching that is. They could look at me and say, you ain't got nothing to teach me. I done taught Sunday school longer than you've been born. I was around fellowship in 1970. You were, you were, you <laughs> But let me tell you something. The truth is, it's some young folk around here who are wise, who are intelligent, who can help you hear from God clearer than you've ever heard in your life. The babies have taught me lessons. The children teach me all the time. I wouldn't even know the right jeans to wear if some of the youth didn't tell pastor, stop wearing them baggy jeans with them shoes. And when you lace up your J's, it's the right way to do it. You can learn from, you feel what I'm saying? You can learn from anybody. Let me give you some scriptures because some of y'all looking at me like, no, nah, you, ain't, you ain't in the Bible today, doc. Here's three scriptures for you. Wise people don't make a show of their knowledge. Proverbs 12, 23. When you really know it, you ain't always got to show it. Uh, here's another one, Proverbs 15, 39. If you reject criticism you only harm yourself 
But if you listen to correction, you grow in understanding. Here's another one. Here's another one. 1 Corinthians 8, 1 through 3. Although being a know-it-all makes us feel important, what is really needed to build the church is love. If anyone thinks he knows all the answers, he is just showing his ignorance. But the person who truly loves God is the one who is open to God's knowledge. I think it was Aristotle or Plato or Socrates. One of them says, I know I am intelligent for I know that I know nothing. Did I say it too fast? <laughs> He says, I know that I am intelligent for I know that I know nothing. The intelligent person knows there's always more that I don't know than I do know. And if you want to grow, I don't care how many years you've been in your field. I don't care how professional you think you are. Surround yourself by pores. Everybody needs a cup in your life and everybody needs a pitcher in your life. Imagine yourself as a glass and everybody needs a cup and everybody needs a pitcher. You need the cup so that you can pour some things into others and you need a pitcher in your life so somebody can pour some things into you. Can I tell you what's changed my life, y'all? And I'm done. What's changed my life being a pastor is that I know, I'm the first one to know I don't know it all. And I will call an older pastor in a minute. I'll call my pastor Meredith, Pastor Charles Jenkins. I'll call some other pastors. i call some teachers. i call some of my old professors. i talk to older members at fellowship because I want to position myself near some pictures. If you are only full of yourself, you will never have space for God. And, and, and I'm trying to say, well, how are you making? You almost two years in this thing as a new pastor, doll. How you doing it, bruh? How you how, how fellowship going, bruh? How everything going up there at the virtual ship, cuz? What you doing up there, man? Y'all killing it. Y'all getting it. No, here's the, the only thing I'm doing is making sure I stay a lifelong learner. I never want to get to the point, and you ought to never want to get to the point where you can no longer grow. Because the moment you stop growing, that's the moment you start dying. I heard my pastor, Dr. E. Dewey Smith, say years ago, he said the church is not an organization, it's an organism. And anything that is an organism ought to grow. You are an organism. And you ought to grow. If anybody has st think they know it all, you're in a position where the only place you're useful is the grave. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you hear me? If you don't think you can learn something from somebody, the only place you're useful is the grave. I know this, listen, <laughs> I'm telling y'all, everything that's in this book hits me before it hits you. And these lessons tonight on the cynical tongue and the know-it-all tongue, these are life-changing words. But I promise you, if you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, in due time, God will exalt you. My daddy taught me this. He said, you can learn two things from people, no matter who they are, smart, intelligent, wise, fools, you know, wealthy, poor. He said, you can learn two things from anybody. Best advice my daddy gave me. He said, you can learn what to do, and you can learn what not to do. You can always learn from anybody. And tonight, that's my prayer for you. Let's pray. God, listen, Lord, you are wearing us out. <laughs> For those of us who've really opened our hearts and opened our minds, this, this stuff is convicting. And it makes us want to be better. It makes us want to do better. It makes us want to grow. It makes us want to uh, reflect and do some introspection. So, God, we're asking for your help. And, God, you, we're asking that you make us stronger. God, we don't want to be cynical. We, we don't want to be the people who only can speak on the opportunities and never can tell people their strengths. We don't want to be know-it-alls because we ruin every relationship. Nobody wants to talk to us. Nobody feels safe around us. Nobody feels valued around us because we dominate every conversation. So, Lord, give us a fresh humility. Give us a fresh humility so that we can always be students even when everybody else thinks we're the star. Every star 
can still be a student. This is my prayer. Help us. Bring us closer to Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Listen, y'all, I got to get off the virtual ship. But do y'all remember when Peter had fished all night and he didn't catch nothing? And then Jesus comes in the morning and says, why, why don't you throw your net on the right side of the boat? Peter could have said, you're not no fisherman, you're a teacher. You don't know what you're talking about. But because he was willing to listen and because he was humble, because Peter wasn't a know-it-all, he was able to catch more fish than he ever caught in his life. Don't miss your biggest catch because you don't have the humility to listen to the advice of somebody to say, why don't you just try this a different way? Y'all, that is so good. That's so good. If you need Christ, come on, he'll change your life. If, if you need a new walk, God will change your life. And if you need that, it's on the bottom of the screen. Email us, text us. The opportunity for you to do that is right there. You have the power, don't forget it, and the authority to change your situation. Come on, sing it with me. You have the power and the authority and the authority, oh my, to change your situation. Say, speak life, speak life. Come on, speak life, speak life, speak life, speak life change your situation hey i want to give you one more opportunity to give i want to give you one more opportunity to sow i thank you for tuning in share this with somebody who needs this and i want you to go back and re-watch every refuel that you need i'm aiming for no more than about 30-ish minutes so you can work out and listen to this play youtube you can go back to facebook work out Listen to this. Drive to work. Listen to this. You need this in your spirit. Because if you change your lips, come on, you know it. You change your life. I love your fellowship. Thank you for giving me your time. I'm better because you've spent this time with me. I feel like Mr. Rogers. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be my sailor? It's the virtual ship, get it? Anyway, may your struggles keep you near the cross. <laughs> may your troubles show that you need God. May your battles end the way they should. And may your bad days prove that God is good. I pray your whole life proves that God is really, really good. I love you, fellowship. Continue to have a great week. Don't be cynical and don't be a know-it-all. Come on, come on, change your situation. You can do it. You have, you have so much power, yeah, and the authority to change your situation. Thank you for worshiping with Fellowship Chicago on the virtual ship. We've always had a commitment of service, and during this season, we've increased our efforts to serve you better. We have made it easy for you to stay connected to get the complete resources you need. You can email us at info at fellowshipchicago.com. Call the church office Tuesday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 773-924-3232. And our social media on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. For real-time updates, you can text Fellowship Chicago to 31996. We have exciting and informative resources throughout the entire week designed specifically with you in mind. Go to fellowshipchicago.com for the full schedule. Until we dock again, thank you for your prayers and financial support of Fellowship Chicago. Remember, we are in this together.